Voxel Farm being a voxel engine, it handles traditional 3D objects differently. The FBX you import is used as a geometry data. You can voxelize it and by doing so it just becomes a group of voxels. There are two ways of importing your FBX. First thing is to know what you want to do with it. This mesh has to be closed, which means that the geometry must not have holes and all the polygons need to be triangles or quads. This can be tweaked and verified in your 3D software. If you just want to use the mesh as a building shape, used with different tiling materials, add the mesh without importing its material. That way, simply select the material you want to use and voxelize it into the world with the mesh box or the mesh brush. If you want this mesh to have a specific texture wrapped around it, you need to create a material in your 3D software, unwrap the mesh, create UV islands and create the textures before exporting it as a FBX file. Once you added the mesh in Voxel Studio, click yes for importing the materials and Voxel Studio will create two materials. The first is the one you assign on your 3D software, which basically is the skin of your mesh with its own set of textures matching the UV coordinates. The other one is the tiling material that will be applied on the voxel inside this shape when it has been voxelized. For example, you can create several wood beams, each one have a custom material for their skin, but the same tiling textures will be used for their solid material. To be consistent and avoid confusion, Name your material and the mesh the same every step of the way. A quick tip for painting on a voxelized mesh. For instance, you imported a mesh with UVs and want to paint it with another version of its skin. Simply create another material and assign the new versions of the textures and change the UV boolean to true. Refresh the renderer and select the paintbrush and this new material. The new material is going to match perfectly the shape and replace the original textures. That is because when you voxelize the mesh with UV, every voxel you created have UV coordinates. You can, of course, paint on them with tiling materials. These UV coordinates will still be there if you decide to repaint them with UV materials. 
All materials in Voxel Studio can add sub-materials, including the ones with UVs. For example, the wood beams here can have the mossy version of their material on top of them. Whatever orientation they are voxelized in the world, because sub-materials are angle-based. Meshes, and especially UV-mapped meshes, are really great assets to make your scene look better. In fact, there are limitations in what you can achieve with only tiling textures, for architecture in particular. Tiling textures works fine for the terrain, although you have to be careful when you create and use these to avoid too much repetitive patterns. Because of the way they are mapped onto the geometry, based on the three axes, they won't do a perfect job when it comes to architecture. I recommend to use them in walls and simple surfaces and let the UV meshes take care of the corners and other intricate shapes. With UV materials, the texture is mapped around a particular shape, so you don't have to worry about pattern deconnections. However, when using UV mapped elements, make sure you don't stretch them too much and be careful about the texture pixel resolution. This needs to be consistent with the tiling material's resolution. Voxel Studio accepts meshes with multiple materials applied on different polygon groups. It will simply create additional skin materials into your list when you import the FBX. When using UV materials, the smoothing angle parameter is going to be really important. For a particle mesh with hard edges, you would choose a lower value preferably the angle you used for baking the normal map. For instance, I bake these wood beams detail on cubic shapes. Here I have hard edges and so I choose a lower angle for the skin material. So the normal map itself will give some volume effect on the edges. For this brick, I chose to bake with smooth normals because the geometry is quite round, with no real 90 degree angles. The normal map doesn't have hard edges baked into it, so I can choose a wider angle in the material properties. I recommend to test your shapes before doing the textures, and to understand how they will be deformed during the building process. That way you can create the proper normal maps for them. This tool here, called Reference Mesh, allows you to import a mesh in a different way. This will only display a mesh in transparency mode, as a guide for building. Simply assign the right coordinates and size. At any time you can choose a color as well and show and hide the mesh. Cancel discards the changes made and show mesh will act as an OK button.
The last thing to know is that meshes are the main ingredients for the prefab system. Prefabs are just a way to assemble them together with code and create your own dynamic structural assets. Please refer to the prefab videos and the online documentation for more information.